upload this into the team page for anybody that couldn't make this evening. I've had lots of messages from people saying, will it be recorded? This is my absolute favourite webinar because it gives me the opportunity to recognise all of the success from the previous month. And there's so, so much to recognise from last month. And how we measure success, this is my first message that I want to share with you tonight. How we measure success isn't all about case credits. Let me just share my screen with you so you can see my slides. We are in a business where our success depends on case credits for sure. Our income will directly be impacted by the amount of case credits that we accumulate. That's the, that's the business that we're in. But our progression isn't all about case credit. And every day, all of the time, I hear people beating themselves up constantly because they didn't hit the level of volume in the month to hit their goal or that they planned for. And I just want to start by saying that progression isn't only measured in case credits because to be a really successful business owner in your own right, not just in this business in network marketing, but period in any business, it takes a hell of a lot of self-development and self-growth. And that isn't always represented in your case credits right away. We're in a business that it takes time to build momentum. It takes time to see the results of the work that you're doing. And when we start getting really caught up on what the case credits are saying and measuring our self-worth and our progress against a number of case credits, we can become really disappointed and really deflated. Tonight is all about celebrating success and celebrating people that are developing in whichever way is right for them at that time. Building a forever business is a journey and it's a journey that everybody takes at their own pace and everybody has different lessons to learn in that journey. Every single one of you on this call are unique and uniquely brilliant in your own right. None of us come in the same. We all start with the same box. We all start with the same 24 hours in the day. But outside of that, we all have our own challenges. We all have our own struggles and things that we need to overcome to get where we want to go. And success isn't somebody that has no struggles. It's somebody that keeps working through those struggles until they get through them and win. That's a successful person. And that's what we want to focus on and what I would love you guys to focus on when you measure in your own success. Measure success in how you're developing. Measure success on how much you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. Measure success on the things that you're doing to try hard to be better. Not so much in case credits. Yes, you want to set case credit goals and you want to work towards something positive growth in your business, but you don't want to make it your be all and end all because that's quite a risky game to start playing. So, the first lot of recognitions that I want to talk through is taking steps, people that have taken steps in the right direction because success is not a big step taken in the future. Success is a series of small steps taken right now. It's about creating new normals. And what I want you to all to imagine for me right now is that you're all stood at the bottom of a massive, long, steep staircase. At the top of that staircase are all of your goals and dreams, all of the things that you want to achieve, the life you want to create for you and your family and the people around you. And you're at the bottom of the staircase right now looking up at it. It's not achievable to get to the top of that staircase in one huge leap for anybody. It's not achievable to become the person you need to become overnight to get to the top of, the top of that staircase. And business isn't about that. Success isn't about that. Success is about taking one step at a time and creating a new normal every time you take a new step. And I love the analogy of Harry Potter in this. Any of you that have seen the Harry Potter films, he's the perfect example of creating new normals one step at a time. In the first film, he's just a young boy that doesn't understand that he has powers. He goes to school and he starts to explore them a little bit. And he defeats his first baddie, just a small baddie, but a baddie. And he takes a step on the ladder and he creates a new normal. In the second film, he goes on to create create more powers, more powerful powers, and defeat a bigger baddie. 
and he creates a new normal and he creates new normals through every single film right up until the end when he defeats the big baddie and he becomes the most powerful wizard. But he didn't do it in film one. It wouldn't have been possible for him in film one. And that's just like us building a business. Everything we want isn't possible overnight, isn't possible in one big leap, but it is possible with constantly taking the right steps to push ourselves out of our comfort zone and develop new normals. And these are the people that have done that amazingly well this month, well, January, last month. So I first of all want to celebrate trust. Trust prospected consistently every single day last month. And that's when you know that success is on its way. You might not see it show up right away, but you do the work every single day. You go through the no's, you go through the rejection and you keep going. And at some point people start to say yes and the momentum builds. And that's exactly the phase that trust is in. So massive well done trust. Kim, Kim paid over 500 euros to attend QLS because she lives in another country, but she didn't let that stop her. Her boss was threatening her with the sack if she took the time off, but she still went to QLS. How many people would have made an excuse not to go to QLS, having lived, been living in another country and having to pay all of that money to be there? But she knew that it would give her the skills and the inspiration to go on to be more. So she was there. And that absolutely deserves celebrating. Carrie booked one-to-ones with charities last month and has been networking constantly to get aloe bars booked in some massive well done carrie ben baxter did his first tabletop just yesterday i believe and had an awesome result well done ben i remember my first one i was absolutely terrified so i know exactly how you were probably feeling yesterday but massive well done pav recruited his first team member first new normal created for pav well done Sam Barker recruited her first team member as well. And also she presented on the live business presentation online. So she really pushed herself out of her comfort zone and did a slot on the BP. Emma Borrell Townsend also presented on that same live business presentation and pushed herself out of her comfort zone and was probably terrified, but did it anyway. Joanne Greaves did her first one-to-one and absolutely smashed it. Well done, Joanne. Rita, Rita did her first launch and had her first sale from that launch. So massive well done, Rita. Michelle Earnshaw got out of her comfort zone and started to speak to people about the products, creating a new normal. Dead scary at first, but one step on that staircase. Well done. Ellen Stockley made her first prospecting call. Everybody should be whooping and cheering for Helen, Ellen, not Helen, Ellen right now. Because that first call, oh my God, I remember it like it was yesterday. I'd got sweaty palms. I was pacing around my kitchen. My throat felt like it was going to close up. I was absolutely terrified. And I'm sure you were too, but you did it. So keep doing it. Well done, Ellen. Tamara Morris, first month in the business, did a launch got put boxes experience packs out and has already started sending out video ones to people about the opportunity in her first month so you know that somebody started strong when they're doing all of that activity in their first month deborah rosa first month and made her first sale in her first month massive well done deborah eva i never know how to pronounce your last name eva so i'm not going to try but she secured her first aloe bar and she's been logging into all of the training that's available like this one tonight Rebecca, Morris Eaton and Sophie Walsh attended QLS. Massive well done for getting yourselves there, ladies. Kirsty Wood stood up and gave a speech at a baby shower and it was such a big deal for Kirsty, something that she would never have done before, but she did it, pushed herself out of her comfort zone and put herself out there. So massive well done, Kirsty. Ash Morgs set up for... Uh, set herself up this is ash in new zealand by the way so big shout out to team new zealand she set herself up for a really awesome february by being really consistent in her activity in january so well done ash beth darcy consistently prospected last month she prospected every single day even though she was really poorly and probably didn't feel like it most days but she pushed herself to do it couldn't fit every single picture on the screen, so I do apologise that not all of you are on the screen. Cherie Wills has really decided to decide last month after some thinking about it in the business, and she's absolutely committed now to building a business. And 
even though she's getting negativity from people around her, she's decided she's not going to let that get to her and carry on with the business. So massive well done, Cherie, for making that decision. Because the first step in major change just start, starts with deciding. Carolina Augustine has been out contact marketing. She was contact marketing in a cafe the other day, which I know is awfully scary, but she did it anyway. So well done, Carolina. And Heather Newell, also in New Zealand, joined the business as a novice customer and got promoted in her first month to assistant supervisor by generating two case credits. So massive, massive well done to each and every one of you. The next lot of recognition, recognitions, recognitions, <laughs> recognitions is all around 4CC because 4CC is the foundation on which success is built in our business. We are fortunate enough to have a business that is so simple. If you can do 4CC, you can be a diamond manager because this business is just about mastering four case credits, introducing people to the business and teaching them to do exactly the same. And if you can do four, then you can do the other two things too. So it's the first step, it's the foundation for success. So massive well done to Kate Munn in New Zealand, who is 4 case credit active, Kerry Knott in Guernsey, who's 4 case credit active, Jackie Tideswell, she actually just received her 4CC level one pin, level three pin, sorry, which means she's been 4 case credit active for the last 12 months consistently. So massive example of a role model. Laura Jane, four case credit active and also just recruited her first team member. Well done, LJ. Vicky Booth only joined in the second half of last month. She did a four case credits within like two weeks of starting, went to training and has been to her local business presentation already. Absolutely flying start, Vicky. Well done. Heidi Moore, four case credit active. Well done, honey. Jo Farah, she actually did 6.5 case credits in retail, so more than four, and Jo's over in Dubai, so massive well done to Team Dubai. Anna Brown, first full month in the business, four case credit active and recruited her first team member, another one to watch by the sounds of it. Victoria Williams attended QLS, did a four case credits, she also did aloe bars and one-to-ones. Sarah McDonough, not just four, but five case credits alongside working 13 hour shifts, made absolutely no excuses and got struck down with the Aussie flow halfway through the month, but still did her five CCs. Kat Birchall, always, always on this list and always does way more than four, at least six to 10. Success leaves clues, guys. You know, these people that you're hearing from now, like Kat, Kat recruits consistently every month. She's got a manager business that grows every month success leaves clues she's not just doing four she's doing above four and she recruits every month annie mckay annie mckay actually did 10.3 case credits personally without a team success leaves clues and you're going to hear from annie in a minute tom wild first month full month in the business four case credit active and went out there contact marketing talking to strangers and went to qls training as well so massive well done to each and every one of you. Retailer of the month this month is Jo Farah in Dubai. So she out-retailed everybody in Team Impact and did 6.5 case credits. Boom. Massive well done, Jo. And the next recognition is our Superstar Recruiter of the Month, Annie Mackay. Five recruits last month. Absolutely phenomenal. And this isn't out of the ordinary for Annie. This is her level of recruitment every month. Why? Because she's stuck to it, she's mastered it, and she's been really consistent. And I really wanted you guys to hear from Annie tonight on some tips that she wants to share with you on how you can do exactly the same. So Annie, I'm just gonna unmute you and stop sharing my screen so that you can come on and come on with everybody, how they can be a superstar recruiter. Are you going to share your webcam, Annie, or have you got slides? No. Do I have to share? My, <laughs> do I have to share my webcam? I will. Yeah, share your webcam so we can see you. Okay. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. Um, can everybody else turn their webcams off? I'll just stay small. It's fine. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay. Right. So. First of all, what I was going to do is take you back to when I first started prospecting because I did not 
recruit consistently at all. So when I first started, I felt how probably most people felt feel. So I was really uncomfortable. I hated picking up the phone. Michelle actually made me do it the first time I met her. And although I hated it at the time, it's probably the best thing that could have happened. Um, I was really embarrassed. I was scared of what people thought. I was really embarrassed of what people thought. That was a big one. And I was just really not very good at it at all. <laughs> I made so many mistakes, like thinking back to some of the stuff that I said or some of the messages that I sent, it's just really, really embarrassing. I was, I was not, yeah, I was not very good at it. It didn't come naturally to me. I didn't get the results that I get now. But, um, oh yeah, and one more thing I remember. So I remember when Michelle was moving to Lanzarote. You'll probably remember this, Michelle. So Michelle drove there, Michelle and James drove there because they were bringing their dogs. So while they were like driving hundreds and hundreds of miles across the country, um, I messaged her, I said, I really need to speak to you about my prospect. And she probably thought it was something really urgent. And um, all it was, she was like, what is it then? And I was like, oh, well, I've been speaking to five people for X amount of days and I haven't recruited yet. And she was just like, just keep doing it. <laughs> so anyway, I did keep doing it because what I did recognize straight away actually was that I, oh, what I'm, sorry, I've got some notes here. I want to make sure that I'm um, definitely saying what I was trying to say. So what I did recognize straight away is that I needed to do it. Like the type, I, it wasn't a choice to me. It wasn't like an optional thing to me. I needed to do it because to build the type of business that I want to build, I have to recruit, I have to prospect. So Michelle said, just keep doing it. So I did keep doing it. And eventually I recruited my first person, but I, I spoke to people consistently every single day for a long time before I recruited my first person. I reckon I spoke to probably about like 150, 200 people before I recruited one person. So why am I telling this story is because back then never did I think that I would be like, what am I? Two man pack superstar recruit. It makes me really embarrassing to say, embarrassed to say that, but I never thought that I would be that then. So absolutely anybody can do it. Um, so my tips are, I don't even feel eligible to give you tips because all of my tips are stuff that I've borrowed from somebody else or I've heard somebody else say. Um, so I guess that is my first tip. Just like do the training, like the impact global website on the prospecting page, the training on there is amazing. Um, there is loads of Andy Ware and stuff like making contact, how to handle objections. That's all really good. James is on the sofa, on the sofa training. That's really good. Um, read books, Eric Warre, GoPro, questions, the answers, um, go for no, obviously it's not a prospect in one, but there's a good lesson in there. So just immerse yourself in absolutely everything and, and put it into practice because that's all I've done. Um, Another tip is consistency. So as I said, I've always been consistent and that's absolutely key. You've heard that so many times. If you want to recruit consistently, then you have to prospect consistently. Um, results aren't always instant. So you, the people that I prospect, the people that I have joined my team this month, well in January, two of them, maybe even three of them have come from like work that I've previously done, conversations that I had in December. So, um, so yeah, you have to be speaking to people consistently to have that steady inflow of people to come into your team. And then the biggest thing that I've probably overcome from being back then when I wasn't really recruiting to now is in here. Um, because once you know, well, once you've even done the training, like it's quite a simple process, really. Yes, there are some skills that you need to learn. And, um, and as you do it a little bit more, you'll get a bit better at it. But once you know how to do it, you know how to bring somebody around the business cycle, the questions that you get are normally the same. You only get a few questions, so you can learn how to answer them. You only get a few objections, you can learn how to answer them. Um, so that side of it comes, becomes quite easy. And most of that stuff's in your first steps of manager book, like handling objections and stuff, and the questions that people ask. It's all in your first steps of manager book. But the, the, the difference is what's going on in here and what you're telling yourself, because in that time where I was really unconfident, that's what I was portraying across. Or in that time where I thought that what a big thing for me was I felt like when I was contacting people, I was doing it for personal gain. That, um, and kind of I was making it about me rather than making it about the people that I was speaking to. Um, so all of that stuff, it comes down to what you actually believe. So once you truly kind of like understand or like grasp the opportunity that you've got your hands on, then sharing it with people doesn't become a problem. And, and I think an, another thing that I was really kind of like made it about me was about, I was kind of sometimes self-conscious about the stuff that I hadn't achieved yet. But 
this is like this opportunity does change hand change change hands this opportunity changes lives and that's a fact so that's what you're sharing with people you're not sharing people your um journey even though you are you know people are joining you it's about the opportunity at the end of the day so what have I else have I got to hear and then just trust the process so it's not like they put that in the first steps to magic books, the business cycle and then how many people you speak to per day because they just thought, oh, we'll put this in because you know, it might work. Like it does work and every single person uses it. So you just have to trust it and just keep going because in like when I was speaking to 150, 200 people before I recruited one person, it would have been so easy to kind of not do that. But yeah, I did <laughs> because I knew that it must work. And I think that probably I had a little bit of a head start because I'd seen my parents prospect and, so I kind of like, I probably had that extra belief there that it would, was going to work. Um, but yeah, just brush the nose off, brush the um, people that ignore you off, brush the people that, the poor people that don't understand it or prejudge it or whatever, brush all them off and then just commit to what your level of consistency is. So whether, you know, whether you decide you're going to do three a day, five a day, 10 a day, commit to it and then just do it every single day. Because like I said in the beginning, I never would have thought, however long ago when I wasn't recruiting consistently that I would be this and it's actually quite embarrassing <laughs> but anyway yeah I hope that helped absolutely fantastic and it is not embarrassing it's something that you should be <laughs> unbelievably proud of and the funny thing is Annie looks quite shocked that she's the top recruiter in team impact but I know for certain that she's probably up there with one of the top recruiters in forever doing five a month and she doesn't believe me when I tell her that, but I know that's true. And I'm also not shocked by it because I knew it was coming. And I knew it was coming by looking at her activity trackers. You know if it's coming by looking at your activity trackers right now. Because if you look at your activity trackers and you're speaking to people consistently every single day, no excuse, I tell you now it's coming. And I have this conversation with people all the time when they're like three weeks into it, four weeks into it, even five, six, seven, eight weeks into it. And they're like, oh my God, I've been doing the work and it's just not happening. It's coming. You don't know when, but sometimes you have to go through 150, 200 people before suddenly one, two, three, four, five, join your team. And one of the things that always stayed with me was when Emma Cooper, who's a Sapphire manager said, I think she spoke to 300 people. And she didn't get one yes in the first 300. And then she recruited five people. And those five people went on to be managers and sent her to soaring manager. So you're just one recruit away from a massive explosion in your business all of the time. Now, I need to end on, on one thing. I've missed out two recognitions, guys. So please accept my apology on this. The reason is because when I was scribbling all these recognitions down, my handwriting's awful, it was all squashed up and I've just gone back over it and realised I've missed two people. One is Michelle Alwell. And I think I missed you, Michelle, because it's just a given, like you've never not done your four case credit since you joined the business for the last, what, three years. That's no excuse for me missing you out. But again, guys, Michelle's a manager with an awesome business, success leaves clues. She's never not done a four. And the other person that I missed out completely unintentionally was Barbara. And that's because these slides were made before Barbara recruited yesterday. Barbara recruited her first team member yesterday. And I just want to say a massive congratulations to you because I know how hard you worked in January. And I know that last time we spoke, you'd spoken to someone, something like 200 and odd people in January. And there it is, your first team member. So absolutely celebrate that. Thank you so much, guys, for logging in. It's just a half an hour webinar tonight. And I will see you all soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening.